So, you all love the last seven things about Affinity Designer that you may not know about. So, I'm back again. Yet another seven things about Affinity Designer that you may not know about. So, I just finished watching that video just to get my head around what I was talking about and everything that I mentioned in that video, just in case I doubled things up. And I realized I'm wearing the exact same shirt. Well, whatever. Anyway, if you haven't seen that video yet, make sure you check it out. I'll link it in the top here. It's seven things that you may not know about. And today we're going to be talking about seven more things about Affinity Designer that you may not know about. Let's get started with number one, which is changing the background color. So I've had a few people mention that the outside of my artboard is quite dark. And personally, I love the dark design on, on most things and most apps. So they asked basically how you change this. And it's pretty simple. If you head up to edit and preferences, or if you're on Mac, I think it's under file and then preferences, open this up under user interface. You can change the artboard background gray level, which literally if you put it up, it goes all the way to white, put it down all the way to black. So I have it a little bit just off black. You can also change the UI gamma as well, which brings up the brightness of all the interface. But again, I prefer it to be quite dark. And alternatively, you can also change the whole style to the light version, which just, no, not for me. Dark it is. All right, so on to number two, which is your scroll wheel. Now, I only found this out pretty recently and I feel quite bad about finding it out quite recently. So let's say we had a shape of a red fill. Now, say I wanted to make the shape bigger. I'd head over to the width and the height, and let's just lock them together so it keeps the ratio. And I would type in a new number, 800. Made it bigger, great. But instead, if you scroll your mouse wheel, it'll go down in increments of one, and you can see that the actual circle is getting smaller and smaller. Or you could hold shift and scroll, and it does it in increments of 10. Or if you hold control and scroll down, it does it in 0.1 increments. So you can make fine tune edits. And so since I found this out, I've been using this a huge amount. Literally any number that you have anywhere, you can scroll and make it bigger, hold shift, go up in increments of 10, hold control, make it go down in increments of 0.1, experiment with it. It just makes things a lot easier, especially with things like text. So if we had a text box here, we could quickly just scale up the text write something in, think, oh, nope, let's make it a bit bigger, scale it all the way up, and there we go. So yeah, scroll wheel. So next up, we've got the asset panel and a little thing with it that you can make things a little bit easier to put into. So if you don't have the asset panel, I usually have it docked up at the top here. If you head over to view, studio, and assets, if you tick that off, a window should pop up. Now I've got my own assets down here. Now, if you wanted to add the circle into the asset, you'd first select the circle, go up into this three lines here and add from selection. And it'd pop up there. But what if we want to not take so many steps in doing it? You literally can just drag and drop. And it's there. That's it. So number four out of seven is the symbols. Now, if, again, if you don't have this up, go to view, studio and symbols. I've got it docked up here again. Now, what this is, is that you can set specific things as symbols, which means that when you change it, it changes every instance of that symbol all at once. For example, let's make this circle a symbol, which you can hit while selected, hit create, adds it up into here. Now, if we duplicate the circle as many times as we want, or we could drag and drop it from in here and drag and drop another one. Let's say we thought, you know what, we don't like red. We could change any one of these, change it to yellow, and all of them would change at the same time. You could add things like layer effects as well, add an inner shadow, and it would affect all of them all at once. And what you can do is specifically choose one of them and attach it. So this one is now free from being a symbol. If you change the color of this one, the rest won't get affected. Now, if you do want a full in-depth go through on how to use symbols and what they're used for, drop it in the comments below. I'll happily make a video explaining as much as I know about symbols. All right, number five, I think, which is saving your export settings. 
So if we head up into the export persona, and let's say that you export the work in the same sort of sizes over and over again. So let's say we export it as the regular artboard size, and say we change that also to a times two size, and maybe let's say we change it to 100 width each time. And this is how we export it so many times over and over again. Well, you can, instead of having to add this over and over again, is set it as a preset. So to create this preset, you literally click on the artboard that you have all your settings set out for, head up to the three or, I can't actually tell if it's four line, whatever, it's those lines up there, and go to create export setup. T name it what you want, so we'll just name this one test. Hit OK. And now let's say we make a whole new document. Make it another square, create. Head into the export persona. And within this artboard, we can head up into the export preset, scroll all the way down, and you've got your test, click on that, and it'll add it straight away. So the ones I've got right now is when I make sub badges or emotes, as soon as I click on them, it gives me the exact dimensions that I need for Twitch emotes or for sub badges. Because if I do them over and over again, I won't have to look up what they are every time or I have to actually type all that stuff in and it just makes it more and more confusing. So yeah, super helpful. All right, so on to number six, which is the text eyeball thing. I don't know, I, I had no other way of explaining what it was, but I think it's a new thing since the 1.9 update. So if I show you on here, if you have a text box and let's say we have some text in here, use my scroll wheel to scroll that up to make it bigger. Uh, let's say we type, I like making these videos. Now, when we click on this, we have this little eyeball icon, which when you click it, anything that's beyond the text boundaries, so this blue box, when you click it, will disappear. That doesn't mean that text has disappeared. It's still there. It just means it's out of view. So you can show it up again, take it away, to be honest, I have no idea how I'm going to use this or even find any use for it at all, but it's there. If you have a use for it, feel free to use it. If stuff's getting in your way, hit that red eye and carry on with your day, I guess. And finally, the seventh thing, which technically is the 14th thing, if you count both videos about Affinity Designer that you may not know, is changing the color of the artboard. Now, when I first started using this and I wanted to change what the background color was, I'd grab a square, I'd draw the square, and then I change the color of the square and be like, cool, that's my red background. That's that's what I need, which is fine to do. However, if you simply click on the artboard up here, it's a lot easier to do when you click it on the name or you can click it as the layer here and simply change the color. You can change the color of the artboard. It's as simple as that. You can change it over and over again. Now up here, you've got the fill color, which you've selected. If you hit the empty selection button, it'll go back to being transparent. It'll only be transparent if when you opened your artboard, you started with a transparent artboard. For example, if we opened a new artboard, but unchecked transparent background, meaning we'll start with a white background. If while selecting the artboard, you change the color now and then hit the empty fill button thing, whatever it's called, it'll go back to being white rather than transparent. So make sure if you want it to be a transparent background, you start off with a transparent background. And if you want it to be a white background, then you can start with a white one. Or if you have a transparent one, you can always just make it white. Pretty simple. I always work transparent ones just so I've got a little bit of control of where I want to put stuff. So there you go. Another seven things about Affinity Designer that you may not know about. Hopefully you've learned a few other extra things. And if you haven't checked out that video, make sure you do. It's got some interesting things that you actually may not know about. So if you did like this video, make sure you hit it with a like. Subscribe if you're new. And as always, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch. All those links are in the description below. And if you do want a in-depth look at symbols itself and you want that video, drop that in the comments below. I'll happily make that for you. And if you have any other tips that other people may not know, drop them in the comments. But as always, I've been Brown Bear. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.